Hello everyone, the voting is over and the game that you guys chose is Pendragon Rising by Choice of Games. In this Choose Your Adventure game, as far as I know, you take role of the King of Britons and you try to unite the island against the invading army. However, it should be not a medieval thing, it should be sort of spells and medieval thing. I'm really psyched about it because it has a great rating on Steam, so I'm glad that you guys chose this, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's start. Chapter 1, The Carrion Field. You wake. It's a struggle to breathe. A weight lies atop you, crushing you. Something sharp digs into your ribs. Pain pulses behind your eyes. There's the salt tang of blood on your lips. You force your eyes open. Pale light stabs at you. Moonlight. It glints off the rings of the male shirt worn by the dead body you lie on. There's a face next to yours, bloodless, mouth slack. Its helm is split in two. The weight above you is another corpse. You heave at it with rising panic and it rolls aside like a sack of grain and now you can breathe. Someone laughs, a guttural bark and a figure looms over you. Long, pale hair, tattered furs and leather, and the gleam of tattooed flesh. A Saxon. A blade flashes. A long dagger rising, rising. The enemy is upon you. You have no weapon. What do you do? So we're obviously in the middle of some sort of battle and we probably got a hit in the head. We lost our memory or something. So we have three options. I attack my enemy barehanded. There's no time for anything else. Or I try to trick my enemy pretending there's someone behind them. Or I grab one of the corpses and use it as a shield. Well, attacking my enemy barehanded seems like a dumb thing. I try to trick my enemy. Nope. I grab one of the corpses and use it as a shield. You roll sideways and grab out at one of your fallen comrades. The body is heavy. But desperation grants you strength. You heave it up and between you and the Saxon. The blade falls, but doesn't hit you. You feel it grate through the iron rings of the armor the corpse is bearing. The Saxon curses. The dagger stuck. You wrench the body sideways and the dagger slips from your enemy's fingers. You take a moment of surprise for a punch to the throat. There's a choked, strangling cough and your attacker collapses. You pull yourself to your knees, head swimming, trying to catch your breath. Gwyned, a shout, a single voice, strong and sure, from somewhere just ahead of you. The name of your homeland in a voice you recognize. So Gwyned is United Kingdom, to, nowadays to United Kingdom, uh, the English islands. You crawl forward, blinking, your vision still blurry. And then you see them. Two figures face each other on open ground, surrounded by the dead and dying. One is armed in Britain fashion, sword, helm, mail coat and shield. The other is huge, clad in skins and furs, and bears an axe with a haft almost as tall as them. Both forms are familiar, but your head pounds, the world is spinning, and names are hard to grasp, even your own. In this dark age fantasy of Britain, you might be a male hero in a world where most warriors are men, and it's women who guard the mysteries of the Veiled Isle. Or you might be a female hero, and it's the women who go to war and the men who talk to the old gods. Now's the time to choose. You try to clear your head. Who are the two warriors that stand in the moonlight in front of you? It's Uta, Queen of Gwynedd, High Queen of the Britons. She faces Gunhild, the Saxon champion. Or it's Ufer, King of Gwynedd, High King of the Britons. He faces Gutwolf, the Saxon champion. So we're gonna be a man, because I'm a man. The Fall Queers. Of course, you are Offer, bastard born son of Uther, the High King, the Briton man who stands before you. 
Your father is alone against the Saxon champion Gutwolf, a battle-scarred brute of a man. You've heard songs sung about his strength. Uther is still hale and hearty, a veteran of many battles, but he's aged a great deal in the years you've been gone. Gwynhead calls Uther again. It's a challenge. There's no fear in it. He steps forward. Gutwolf's grin is wide. He readies his axe. Neither man has noticed you. Your sword lies by your hand. What will you do? Well, we have four options here. I'll throw myself forward and attack Uther's enemy, screaming a challenge. Or I'll work my way around the battlefield stealthily, looking for an, op for an opportunity to stab Gutwolf in the back. Or I'll step out and attempt to parley with the Saxon champion. Or I'll hang back and tend to any wounded who still live. The king is a vast experienced warrior and will gain much respect by dealing with Gutwolf himself. So we have uh, the following statistics. Uh, we are 50% leader, 50% diplomat, 50% warrior. Compassion 40% against ruthlessness, which is 60. Bravado 50 against cunning 50. And old faith 50 against Rome 50. Oh yeah, that's supposed to be another uh, big thing in here. You have to decide which kind of religion you're gonna go with. And I think that the old faith is the one we're going to choose, but we'll see. Acclaim disliked allies few. Okay. Well, I'll hang back and tend to any wounded because uh, interfering in this duel wouldn't be so good for us. The Saxon hauls his axe into the air and steps forward, swinging it into long, looping strokes. Uther raises his shield, the point of his sword low, looking for a gap in the man's defenses. You keep half an eye on the two figures as you hunt through the bodies. A man moans as you set your hand on his shoulder. It's a loon. He's alive, but his face and neck are dark with blood. The shoulder of his male hauberk has a jagged hole in it where something has forced the rings apart. A spear, by the looks of it. He's losing blood fast. You tear a strip of cloth from your undershirt and wad it up. This is the best you'll be able to do for him for now. And even if you stop the bleeding, he'll likely die of fever within days. But he has no one else. You press the cloth into the wound, clamping your hand down on it. He flinches back, but you ignore him, pressing more firmly. He cries out. You look up. Neither Gutwolf nor Uther notice the sound. They are focused on each other. The Saxon is battering at the king's shield, and Uther is clearly tiring. And then he does the unexpected, leaping forward to get under Gutwolf's guard. His blade sinks between the Saxon's ribs, but it's a custom move. Even though Gutwolf's blow is robbed of its strength, still the great axe catches Uther in the side. The king slams his shield up and under the Saxon champion's chin. The man's head snaps backwards and he staggers to his knees. Uther shoves his sword deeper and twists it, then kicks his foe off the blade and lets him slide to the ground. Uther stands pale in the moonlight, swaying slightly breathing heavily. He has one hand clasped to the wound on his side. Blood drips through his fingers. What do you do? I go to help Uther. Knowing he is a proud man, I wait for him to ask for help. Or I take the opportunity to ensure Gutwolf's won't get up again. Mm. Knowing he's a proud man, I wait for him to ask for help. Achievement, first blood, survive for your first battle. Nice. The king closes his eyes, taking long, slow breaths, mastering his pain. Once again, you're struck by how much older he looks now when you left this land all those years ago. Father, my lord, it's Bedwyr, Uther's legitimate son and heir, your half-brother. There are a handful of men with him. He shoots you a venomous glare and pushes past you, going to help the king. It's done, lord. The fighting's over. We were too far away. 
They try to get back to you, but the king interrupts him. What of their readers? What of Cedric? The wolf lord and his whelp of a son are fled, along with a score of their men. We'll not be seeing them this side of winter. Uther grunts in acknowledgement. Aye, but while we build up our winter stores, they'll be doing the same. They... He gives a sudden gasp and sways where he stands, clutching at his side. Bedwer takes his father's arm. Men go to his aid. You watch helplessly as they start to help him from the field. Uther and his true son. Others have arrived to tend the wounded. Elun is still alive. Thanks to your efforts, one of the druid Arcolets is instructing two men to carry him to where he can be treated. Arthur, are you wounded? It's Gawain. You were so focused on Uther and Bedwyr, you didn't notice him approach. The big man is steaming slightly in the cold night air, and his bare arms are caked in dirt and blood. He will have been where the fighting was thickest. Not where you'd see it, you mutter. Gawain is looking down at the Saxon's champion's corpse. Well, at least some goods came of the night. Someone slaps you on the back. It's Kai, your foster brother. Cheer up, and a bad start to our battle owners. Gawain growls. I'd keep your mouth closed about battle owners today. Cedric and his son Cynric are away and free, and the king looks fit for the grave. But we've driven them off, you hairy northern lard barrel. It's worth a smile at the least. Kai sees your expression. Oh, come on, Art. We're back in your homeland. You're alive. The enemy's flood. Life is good. I have a bottle of Aquitanian red I've saved from the paws of your barbarian kinsmen. Let's get back and break it open. And then, if I know this lot, they'll be feasting, right? He addresses Gavain. That's what you Britons do, isn't it? Gavine nods reluctantly. Oh, I, They'll be feasting. So yeah, this is the start. The first chapter is ending here. And how did we do? Okay, we've became a bit more of a leader, a bit less of a warrior. And we've became way more ruthless than compassionate. <laughs> Something tells me that I haven't really done well, though. Uh, I might have gone and saved the king, that would probably sit better with the story. But, you know, we are now way more ruthless and way more leader like So let's hope that's going to be how this is gonna continue. So yeah, let's head to the next chapter of Pandragon Rising. Because it is starting more than well.